Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. Over the last six months, I've reviewed a ton of new 4K gaming monitors. So it's time to provide my updated thoughts on which of them are worth buying right now. There are more 4K high refresh monitors on the market now than ever before. And while this is still a high-end category for premium shoppers, pricing has been steadily dropping over time. So it's a pretty good time to get into 4K gaming if you're interested. Today's sponsor spot is brought to you by ASUS's latest range of Intel Z690 motherboards, along with their ROG Ryogen 2 all-in-one liquid coolers. One of the most extreme Z690 motherboards on the market is the ROG Maximus Z690 Hero D5, packing a 10-phase V-Core with two 90-amp power stages per phase, allowing it to overclock the 12900K to the max. Then, for cooling your overclocked 12th Gen Core Series CPU, there's the ROG Ryogen 2 360 LCD AIO liquid cooler, packing a 7th generation Acer Tech pump, Noctua radiator fans, and an embedded fan for the CPU socket area. So it harnesses both water and air to provide high performance cooling. And for more information, please check the link in the video description. Before getting into our picks, like last time, I want to briefly talk about whether you should buy a 4K monitor or not. Obviously, there are lots of monitor categories these days, and perhaps there might be something more suitable for you. My general thoughts for a large number of PC gamers is that you should probably choose 1440p over 4K right now. 1440p medium refresh monitors around that 144Hz mark are much cheaper than 4K equivalents right now. Alternatively, if you want to go high-end, 1440p monitors will offer higher refresh rates at the same price as 4K, or even at lower prices for some models. With current GPU hardware, you'll be able to run games at higher frame rates on 1440p, leading to a smoother experience, whereas for a lot of people, native 4K gaming is going to be more like 60fps or less. So at the current level of power we have in GPU hardware, I still feel 1440p is the sweet spot. However, that's not to say there aren't reasons to go 4K. The high-end GPUs of today, think NVIDIA's GeForce RTX 3080 and above, are quite capable of 4K gaming, and depending on the title, you might be able to run them at high frame rates. If you do have a powerful gaming rig, then grabbing a 4K high refresh monitor could be the way to go. 4K monitors also make the most sense for console gaming on the PlayStation 5 or Xbox Series X, because these systems target 4K outputs, and the PS5 doesn't even support 1440p. The final reason for going 4K is if you want a lot of flexibility and versatility in your setup. 4K monitors are great for desktop use, productivity apps, and content creation, so if you want to do that alongside gaming, 4K is the way to go. With the rise of high-performance 4K IPS monitors with wide color gamuts, doing this sort of thing now is better than ever. In today's video, we are purely going to be talking about 4K gaming monitors, which means we are not talking about any 60Hz displays. 120Hz is the minimum. I know some people do still buy cheap 4K 60Hz displays, but I'd recommend you don't do that for gaming. I also will be mostly talking about products that I've reviewed and tested myself, so I know they are good, rather than guessing or looking at spec sheets. We have full reviews for lots of the products in this video that are worth checking out for more in-depth testing and thoughts. We'll have a link for our monitor review playlist in the description below. If you're buying a 4K high refresh gaming monitor right now, by far the best category to invest into is the 27 inch category. 4K monitors around this size deliver the best performance and are the most affordable, making them great buys for a wide variety of use cases. But it's also important to grab something from this current generation of 4K panels, otherwise you will be missing out on key features. For the majority of buyers, the 4K monitor that makes the most sense to buy also turns out to be the best value, typically sitting in the $600 to $700 US range. And my recommendation here hasn't changed since my last video. I would still opt to purchase the Gigabyte M28U. I've reviewed roughly half a dozen 4K monitors since that previous video, and the M28U still comes out on top from a bang for buck perspective. The M28U has very good response time performance with an average transition in our testing of 4 milliseconds at 144Hz. It also has very good performance across the refresh range, so for those using adaptive sync variable refresh rates, you don't need to tweak overdrive settings to get the best experience. This IPS monitor delivers speed in the ideal range for the latest generation of IPS panels, so there's no funny business going on here for motion performance. And this is complemented with great backlight strobing that works alongside Adaptive Sync. We also get HDMI 2.1 support, which is essential when buying a new 4K monitor in 2022. Not all monitors have this feature, so be sure to get one that does. 
What Gigabyte offers for color quality is also very strong thanks to it being an IPS panel. So viewing angles are excellent and it does pack a wide color gamut, though not as wide as the best monitors of today. Factory calibration is above average, there's a very good sRGB mode for everyday use, and contrast is typical for an IPS panel, no major issues there. To top it all off, Gigabyte include a KVM switch and a height adjustable stand which are both neat feature additions. While I would recommend the M28U for most people after a 4K gaming monitor of this size, there are some situations where an alternative may be better. One very important thing to point out is the M28U has terrible HDR performance. It's not really an HDR monitor at all, so if you want proper HDR, this is not the monitor for you. Just be aware that getting true HDR will cost you double to triple the MSRP of this monitor. Don't be fooled by fake HDR monitors that add it to the spec sheet without including the required hardware. The M28U is available pretty consistently for $650 US, which is a great price and is among the cheapest 28-inch monitors that use this same Interlux panel. However, I wouldn't always recommend it. Yeah, sure, I'd recommend it most of the time, but there are some exceptions, so let's work through them. For those specifically buying a 4K monitor to use with a PlayStation 5, the M28U isn't the best choice as the HDMI 2.1 ports are limited to just 24 gigabits per second instead of the full 48 gigabits per second you get with other monitors. The PS5 doesn't handle this optimally, so getting a full 48 gigabits per second monitor makes more sense. In these instances, I'd recommend the Samsung Odyssey G7 S28, which does offer full bandwidth HDMI 2.1. Throughout most of the last six months, the Odyssey G7 S28 has been more expensive than the M28U, typically sitting at $700 US. And outside of HDMI 2.1, both monitors deliver very similar performance, so most of the time I'd choose the M28U for $50 less. However, in the last couple of days, the Odyssey G7 S28 has gone on sale for as low as $630, and at those times, I'd get it over the M28U. This may also be the case in your region, if the Samsung model is cheaper than the Gigabyte, I'd buy it. I'd also go with the Samsung for PS5 use. Otherwise, if the Gigabyte is cheaper, it's what I'd get. However, neither the M28U nor the Odyssey G7 S28 are the overall best 4K 144Hz gaming monitors that you can get right now. That crown goes to the EVE Spectrum 4K. Now, I wouldn't strongly recommend buying from EVE as a company. You can see my thoughts on why in my Spectrum review. However, since then, EVE does seem to have been delivering on their promises and shipping monitors to customers in a timely fashion. So I'm more comfortable with a recommendation here than I was when I bought my unit to review. Aside from EVE the company, the Spectrum 4K is actually a really good 4K 144Hz monitor. It uses an LG panel, which has some benefits over the Interlux panel used in the M28U, such as a wider color gamut, which is great for DCI-P3 usage and makes the display more versatile for both content creation and gaming. The Spectrum also has elite factory calibration, better than any other 4K display I've tested, plus more customization options like its highly tunable overdrive and backlight strobing controls. The main reason why I wouldn't recommend the Spectrum 4K for most buyers is the price. It's hard to justify spending $900, including the stand, when the M28U and Odyssey G7 are typically available around $650 to $700, unless you specifically must have one of the additional features. Personally, I don't think the Spectrum offers an additional $250 of value over the M28U. $900 is simply far too expensive, but it's still worth considering if you want the best of the best. If you're after a 4K 144Hz gaming monitor, but think 27 or 28 inches is a bit too small, well luckily there are 32 inch models available, the Steve category if you will. Unfortunately, based on the 32 inch displays that I've tested, these larger variants don't perform as well as their smaller counterparts, usually featuring inferior response times. For many people, this won't be a massive deal breaker, but I would personally choose a 27 inch option over 32 inches if I had the choice. If you do want a 32-inch 4K monitor though, I'd currently recommend the MSI Optics MPG321UI-QD, which is available for $880. US The MSI model's big strength is in color performance. It has a very wide color gamut, covering nearly all of the sRGB, Adobe RGB, and DCI-P3 color spaces. This makes it an excellent choice as a dual-use monitor for gaming and content creation. You could flip this display into its built-in Adobe RGB mode for editing images in Photoshop, then play some games at 4K 144Hz when you're done. 
or use the decent sRGB mode for watching YouTube content without oversaturation. On top of this, MSI include a KVM switch, full bandwidth HDMI 2.1, semi-HDR functionality, and decent brightness and contrast. Where the MPG 321UR-QD stumbles is in motion performance. The AO Optronics panel being used here is okay at 144Hz, but on average across the entire refresh rate range, it's not that fast, especially compared to 27-inch models. MSI didn't include a variable overdrive, which hurts performance and leads to a last-gen IPS experience, although the backlight strobing mode is not too bad. While this is an obvious downside to the display, I'm yet to test an alternative that offers anything meaningfully better. The alternate option to the MPG 321UR-QD is Gigabyte's M32U, the larger brother to the M28U. We haven't tested this exact model, but we have tested the Aorus Fi 32U, which is basically the same monitor, just with a more expensive price tag, features, and design. If you opt for the M32U, you'll save about $120 US compared to the MSI model, making it a more budget-friendly choice, but it's still expensive relative to smaller 4K monitors. The M32U, based on our testing of the Fi 32U, which uses the same panel, is faster, but features high levels of overshoot on average across the refresh range, so it ends up being more of a gaming-focused choice. However, the compromise here is in color gamut. The M32U panel isn't anywhere near as wide as the MSI variant, with more limited coverage of P3 and Adobe RGB. It lacks the versatility you get with the MSI model, which I think is worth paying $120 more to get, but if you're just after something for gaming, then the M32U could be a suitable option. If you're after a normal sized 4K monitor that can also do full true HDR, well, I hope you're rich because you're gonna to have to pay quite a bit of money for that privilege. Today's 4K true HDR displays are much more expensive than the regular SDR monitors that we've been discussing so far, restricting them to the high end market for buyers with deep pockets. Even six months on from our last 4K monitor recommendation video, there are still very few true HDR gaming monitors on the market today, with a size in the normal range for desktop monitor usage, so in the 32 inch class or lower. I expect this to change and improve over the course of 2022, so I've got a few options for people interested in this sort of display. For most people, after a 4K True HDR gaming monitor, I would recommend not buying something now and waiting instead. Thanks to advancements in the OLED market, I think there's a bit of pressure on the HDR monitor space, and I expect to see quite a few new HDR monitor releases in the second half of the year. I really don't think it's worth spending $3,000 on today's hardware when it looks like the market will rapidly evolve and see new options launch soon. A couple of examples being the Acer Predator X32 FP, which has a 576 zone mini LED backlight and is set to launch soon for $1,800 US, and the AOC PD32M, which brings 1,152 zone backlighting and 1,400 nits peak brightness for less than $2,000 US. Yeah, still expensive, but not quite as expensive as we've seen. If you do want a 4K HDR gaming monitor right now, well, I would actually recommend something totally different instead. In my opinion, the best HDR gaming monitor right now is the Alienware AW3423DW, which is a QD OLED panel that delivers exceptional HDR performance, including deep blacks, per pixel local dimming, and elite contrast ratios, as we'd expect for an OLED display. However, it's obviously not a 4K display. This is a 3440 by 1440 175Hz ultrawide monitor, which is a different format. And if you set on 4K, this won't be for you. But if HDR is the most important factor for you, I'd strongly consider the AW3423DW. It's just $1,300 US, which is far cheaper than most 4K HDR monitors of today. It performs well and is great for HDR gaming. I'd personally rather save $1,000 and game on this QD OLED ultrawide or wait for new HDR monitors later this year than waste my cash on the 4K options of today. With all that said, if you absolutely must buy a 4K HDR gaming monitor today, the only viable option is the ASUS ROG Swift PG32 UQX, which costs a whopping $3,000 US. Now, in many respects, this is a good monitor. It's true HDR, it has 1152 zone mini LED backlighting, high brightness in excess of 1500 nits, and a 144Hz refresh rate. For HDR gaming, it looks pretty decent and delivers plenty of wow factor. But it's also got plenty of flaws. Response times are slow, much slower than other 4K monitors we've been talking about. It feels quite last generation in this area. It also lacks HDMI 2.1, which is a key feature of today's 4K monitors, and makes it incompatible with the 4K 120Hz modes available in the latest game consoles. 
along with the insanely high price tag of $3,000. It's quite hard to recommend, but it's also the only option, so I guess I have to mention it. If you truly want the best 4K HDR experience on PC and don't want to go with any of my previous options, so you don't want to spend $3,000 on the PG32 UQX, you don't want a QD OLED ultrawide, and you don't want to wait, then the next best choice is to step up to a larger format gaming monitor, and right now there's no better choice than an OLED TV. The benefits to OLED are all based around its self-lit pixel technology. As each pixel is individually lit, they can also be fully switched off to display black, leading to extremely deep blacks, detailed shadows, and infinite contrast ratios. This is perfect for HDR, as contrast is so important. With an OLED panel, you don't get blooming due to low backlight zone counts, and this looks stunning in practice. Once you've used an OLED, it is hard to go back. The nature of OLEDs is also conducive to extremely fast response times, far faster than any modern LCD. Motion performance at the same refresh rate as an LCD is in the range of five times better or more, and this allows for backlight strobing, or black frame insertion, that smokes what LCDs can do in terms of clarity. Today's 42-inch and 48-inch OLEDs can reach 120Hz refresh rates, which isn't the fastest going around, but sufficient for a smooth, high refresh experience at 4K. My recommendations in this area are LG's C-Series OLED TVs, based on what I've tested last year. I'm yet to test the newer C2 series, hopefully I'll be getting to that soon, but the C1 series in a 48-inch size was very impressive. The C2 generation brings with it an even smaller variant, the 42-inch model, which I feel could be a lot more suited to PC gaming and desktop use, and it should deliver similar performance to the 48-inch models I've already tested. The C1 in a 48-inch size can be found right now for as low as $1,000, which isn't cheap, but is also great value for what it offers, especially compared to the PG32 UQX. If that sort of size is suitable for you, I'd have no hesitation jumping in to get the C1. If you're more interested in the new 42-inch C2 model, they're just coming to market now in some countries with an MSRP of $1,400 US, which is still a decent price if performance holds up, but I think the $1,000 C1 is a bit better value. While I'd have no trouble recommending these OLEDs to someone using it for content consumption or gaming, there are some drawbacks that are important to mention. The first is the risk of burn-in, which is not that relevant for viewing mixed content, but is likely to happen if you are using the C1 or C2 as a desktop monitor. Static content like web browsers and other desktop apps are not ideal for OLED panels, and some of the panel protection features are ineffective or annoying for desktop use, like the automatic brightness limiter and pixel shifter. These OLED panels also just haven't been designed for desktop use. Their RGBW subpixel layout is not great for text clarity, the size might be inconvenient for a lot of setups, and brightness is very low compared to today's LCDs, though acceptable for HDR content in the HDR mode. Again, great for use solely as a content consumption display, not great for desktop users. At the end of the day, now is still a great time to buy a 27-inch 4K monitor for gaming. We're finally seeing some really compelling products hit the market that aren't full of compromises in that category specifically. However, with the other categories, it's still a bit of a process that I do expect to get better over the course of 2022, especially if you're after an HDR monitor, as it does look like we're about to get more LCD options, more OLED options, and smaller LG OLED TV sizes to work with. By the time we get around to our recommendations in the second half of 2022, I'm hoping to have even more great options to talk about, but unfortunately, in the short term, buyers might have to wait until something good pops up. Anyway, that's it for this monitor recommendation video. If you're interested in supporting our independent monitor testing and all the reviews that we do throughout the year, then please consider supporting us on Patreon and Floatplane. Links to those are in the description below. Also, if you're interested in some of the monitors that we've talked about throughout this review, we do have links to see their current pricing in the description and also links to our monitor playlist, which will take you through and show you the reviews of a lot of the monitors that we have been talking about for more in-depth information on them. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.